Hi guys. In this video, you will see how you can install Ventoe Multi Boot Manager and Windows 11 on one disk. This is an experiment that I have been trying for a while, and honestly, it turned out to be very successful, so if you are interested, stay with me until the end. Let me explain what my goal was. When Ventoe is installed, it formats the entire drive regardless of whether it is an internal or a portable USB drive. I wanted to use my internal drive to have both Ventoe and Windows 11 running on it. In this video I will be doing a fresh install of Windows, so if you follow along don't forget to back up your important files first. If you want to keep your current Windows installation just subscribe and I'll show you soon in my next video. But anyway, let's get started. To follow the steps in this video you will need a USB drive and a disk installed on your computer from which you can prepare the USB drive. You can also use another computer on which to create the USB drive. It is very important to remember that if you have more than one disk on your computer I recommend that you disconnect the unnecessary one until you have completed the installation of Ventoe and Windows 11. So leave only the disk on which you want to dual boot and which will be completely erased. The USB drive that I will create will be Ventoe, and I will put the Ventoe Live ISO and the Windows 11 ISO in it. The first step is to download the Windows 11 ISO from the official Microsoft website. Wait for the download to complete. When the Windows 11 download is complete, go back to the search engine, search for Ventoe, and go to the download page. From the Ventoe download page on SourceForge.net, you need to download Ventoe for Windows or Linux depending on which system you currently have installed on your computer, as well as the Ventoe Live CD. For those of you who don't know how to create a Ventoe, I will include links in the description of this video to see how to create it on Windows or Linux. When you are done downloading the Ventoe files, close your browser and go to your downloads folder. Unzip the Ventoe zip file and then open the unzipped folder. Insert the USB drive on which you will install Ventoe and launch the Ventoe 2 disk application. In the Ventoe 2 disk, first make sure you have selected the correct USB device. Then select options and make sure that the partition style is MBR. This is important because Windows installation sometimes gives an error if it is on GPT partition style. Anyway, when you are ready, click install. Confirm the next Windows and wait for the installation to complete. When the installation is complete, close the Ventoe 2 disk. The next step is to copy the Ventoe Live CD ISO file and the Windows ISO file from the Downloads folder to the Ventoe folder on the USB drive. I will shorten the copying time in the video so as not to waste your time. When the files are copied, we are ready and can start the installation process. Remember that in the next steps the disk on which Windows is installed will be erased, so don't forget to back up everything that is important to you. When you are done, reboot and enable the UEFI boot menu on your computer. The most common keys for this are F2, F12, Escape, or Delete.
In the UEFI boot menu, select the option to boot from the USB drive. In the Ventoe menu, select Ventoe Live CD and press Enter. Now select Boot in Normal mode and press Enter again. Here select the default option and wait for Ventoe Live CD to load. You will see the Ventoe 2 disk application again. In the Devices menu you will only see the Ventoe USB disk from which we have currently booted. To also show the internal disk on which you will install Ventoe, go to Options and select Show All Disks. Then select the internal disk in the Devices menu. When you are done, go back to Options and select GPT Partition Style. When you are done, Go back to Options and select Partition Configuration. We will use Partition Configuration to tell Ventoe not to use the entire disk and to leave unallocated space at the end of the disk. To do this, enable the Preserve Some Space at the end of the disk checkbox. Then type the amount of free space you want in gigabytes. When you are done, press OK. Now you can see the set amount of free space. Everything is ready, and I will continue with the installation. You will receive two warnings that the disk will be erased. Confirm them and wait for the installation process to complete. When everything is ready, close Ventoe 2 disk and the computer will restart. Immediately after the restart, re-enable the UEFI boot menu. In the UEFI boot menu, select the USB device again and boot from it. In Ventoe, select the Windows 11 ISO and press Enter. Now you can try boot in normal mode, but for me sometimes the boot gets stuck, so I will choose boot in Vimboot mode. Wait for the Windows installer to load. When the installer loads, set your language. Enter your Windows product key or select I don't have a product key to continue. Now select the version of Windows you want to install. You must accept the license agreement. On this window, select Custom Install. OK, now you will see your disk and all the partitions on it. The first is the partition of Ventoe where you can put the ISO images. It is recognized as the primary partition. The second is the partition from which Ventoe starts and it is recognized as the OEM partition. And lastly is the unrecognized space that I allocated when I created Ventoe on the disk. What I need to do here is to mark the empty space and continue with next. In this way, Windows will use only that part of the disk and create the partitions it needs there automatically. Wait for the installation to complete. I will hurry up and save you the time needed for the installation process. When the installation is complete, the computer will restart automatically. Remove the Ventoe USB because you will no longer need it. After the restart, you will have to wait a little longer for the settings that Windows will make automatically, so be patient. When everything is ready, go through the steps of the post-installation process, which includes logging into your Microsoft account. If you don't have a Microsoft account, you will need to create one. Okay, the Windows installation is complete and I can show you what's happening on my disk. I have five partitions on the disk. The first is Ventoe and is intended for ISO images. The second is Ventoe again and contains its boot files. The third is the EFI partition with the Windows boot files. The fourth is the Windows C partition. 
and the fifth is the Windows Recovery Partition. Of all these partitions, only the Ventoe one and is intended for ISO images and the Windows C partition will be visible in the File Explorer. You may have noticed that the Ventoe partition is 2.44 GB in size, even though I told Ventoe to use 20 GB. In this case, the partition for the ISO images should have been about 18 GB in size. Honestly, I don't understand where this difference came from. But anyway, I'll show you now that it doesn't matter. I'm going to create a folder on my C drive that I'll use for the ISO images. I'm making the folder here because this is the directory that opens when you press F2 from the Ventoe menu, so you don't have to navigate too much. You can name the folder whatever you want. After I created the folder that I will use for the ISO images, it's time to download the ISO images of several popular Linux distributions to try out Ventoe. After downloading 7 Linux distributions, I will copy MX Linux to the Ventoe partition. I'm doing this so you can get an idea of where your ISO images will appear if you use this partition. Now I'm going to move all the downloaded images into the folder I created on my C drive, and you'll see how easy and fast it is. I have the necessary distributions for the test, so I will restart the computer to test Ventoe. While I was waiting for the Linux distributions to be downloaded, I installed the Refined Boot Manager. I didn't show this in the video, but I will include a link in the description of this video, and if any of you don't know how to install Refined, you can watch it. Why did I install Refined? Because with Refined, it will be more convenient for you, and you won't have to activate the boot menu on your computer every time you need a Ventoe. Refine will also help you if your UEFI doesn't recognize the Ventoe boot partition, and in that case you won't see it in the UEFI boot menu. So I recommend you install Refined. Let's now continue with the Ventoe test. When you start Ventoe by default, it shows you its partition for ISO images. That's why you see MX Linux, which I copied here. If you don't have an ISO here, it will be empty. Now I will look for the folder with the ISO images that I made on my C drive by pressing F2. This option will show all the partitions on my drive, including the hidden ones. Select the partition where Windows is installed and press Enter. This will take you directly to your C drive, where the ISO image folder is located. Let's start Cache OS. What impressed me in general is that the installer's load may be 50% faster than from the USB drive. This is of course normal because the data exchange on the internal drive is much faster than even the fastest USB drive. Another advantage of having Ventoe on your drive is that everything is at your fingertips, and if you often try Linux distributions or reinstall Windows, you no longer need to use USB drives, which by the way very often break. However, it is very important to remember the Ventoe partition on which the ISO images are contained, you will need it if you want to reinstall Windows or replace it with Linux, so if you do so, you must boot the ISO from there. And since you saw that the Ventoe partition is 2.44 GB in size, even though I told Ventoe to use 20 GB, leave more space for Ventoe so that you have at least a 10 GB partition for ISO images. I won't show you how to boot all the distributions I downloaded. They were all successful, I even had successful installations of Cache OS and Linux Mint. Although in all my videos I try to show the safest methods but be careful. I have been using this configuration for more than a month on one of my ThinkPads, on which I experiment and often have to install new operating systems, and I am really very happy. Whether you use it or not is entirely up to you. I remind you that Refind will be very useful not only if you use the method from this video but also if you try new operating systems, because it will always find all the boot files on your computer. I hope the video was useful and interesting for you. If you liked it, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss new videos. 
If you have any questions or ideas for future topics, leave your comments below. Your opinion is important to me and helps me improve my content. See you in the next video. Have a nice day and take care.